about right now is we're going to talk about how to set up a search for somebody, maybe a new client that's looking to buy a house. We're going to set up a new search in Sabor. So whenever you click into Sabor, actually if you start from the very, very beginning, when you log in, you're going to come to a screen that looks like this. You need to go to your MLS, which in Sabor is called Connect MLS. Okay. So once you get into Connect MLS, we're going to set up a new search. So right here, when we click on search, if you hover over this, if you're on your computer, if you're on your desktop, if you're at home, uh, you're going to want to use the classic searching feature because we're looking for listings, not a particular address, anything like that. So, and the modern one is more set up for your phone. So if you try to do this from your phone, you're going to want to click modern. It's just a little bit easier, a little more user friendly. Here, you're going to want to click classic. And now what I'm looking for for this particular family is, or for this particular guy, is he's actually an investor. He wants to find a rental property. So we're going to do two separate searches, but I'm just going to show you the first one. He wants to find these, a single residential, single family. Uh, he also wants to look at duplexes. So I'm going to set up two separate searches, but as you can see, the only thing that's going to change is going to be just which one of these two I click on. So I'm going to start with a single family residential as we go into it here. So when I do this, the only thing that you have to do is the status. Um, you're going to see this is very familiar when you run comps as well. But what I'm going to do is if you see, it'll pull up all active. Now, this right here means an active one. Obviously, it's a house that is for sale. This is new. I believe it's the first week it's on the market. It's classified as new. It might be two weeks. I can't remember. So just leave that one checked. That's easy. Back on market is if they decide to... Um, if it went off the market for whatever reason, maybe they withdrew it, maybe they um, decided to cancel the listing and put it back on, maybe it was under active option, who knows, doesn't matter, back on market. Extended, this is whenever you fill out a home, it's going to ask you for how long do you have the exclusive right to sell on it. If they have extended that, that usually means it's been on the market for quite some time, so that's always a good one to put in there because you're gonna have a little negotiation power negotiating power. And then you have price change, active option, price change is self-explanatory, active option. This has to do with, is it under contract right now? And is it during the option period? Um, I usually leave those off. Very seldomly do I see houses fall off of the option, like somebody declines to die, buy it. Um, especially when dealing with investors, they're not going to want to wait. They know to move quickly. So I'm going to take that off. And active RFR means that it's through the option period but they are allowing for backup offers at this point. So I'm gonna leave that off as well for this particular search. So I'm gonna say, okay. The next thing you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to limit it because Sabor, any house in the state of Texas can be listed in Sabor. Um, Sabor stands for the San Antonio Board of Realtors. So the majority of things in here is gonna be San Antonio, but I've seen things as far north as Colleen. So you can go in here and if you click, you can choose two different ways to do this. So if you're familiar with San Antonio, this is Loop 410. This is Loop 1604, and you see how they have it zoned different areas. So pretty much all of Comal County is zone 2600. Um, if you're going out towards Seguin, you're going to be in the 1700. Uh, and I know where my client wants to be, and my client is looking basically right around here. So I have two ways I can do this. I can either click all of the areas that I know he's looking at, okay, or what I can do is I can select boundaries by drawing them. So this thing defaults to the uh, White Line World Headquarters, but you can tell it to center on anything you want or you can just drag the map over. So as I drag the map over, you can zoom in, zoom out, it's pretty easy. What I'm gonna do for this particular one, uh, you can choose all kinds of stuff. You can draw a circle, so you click a circle, you click, pull, and it just makes it as big or as small as you want. I'm not gonna use that, so we're gonna try select boundaries again. You can do a square if you, oh man, I that difficult. You can do a square if you want to, um, if you know it's a particular area. Uh, again, I'm not going to do that. And last but not least is the one that I find myself using more than anything else, which is the polygon tool. So what you want to do is you click around the area and you can pick any shape that you want. When you're done, you double click and it sets that. So everything in the green that hits the rest of the criteria will show up here. So I'm gonna reset that one more time because I don't like that, that was not what I was trying to do. So my client is looking for pretty much anything on the northeast to northwest side of San Antonio. So 
that's pretty easy for me. I'm going to start over here, and I'm just going to start clicking where I think him and I talked about and trying to keep it about where he wants to be, which was all up in here. So when I double click, it completes the shape for me. And as you can see, I can drag these around if I need to move anything. So this is kind of where he was looking. Um, I got his pre-approval back today, so I can say that I know he's up to $350,000 is what he's pre-approved for. But he specifically said he doesn't want to spend more than 250. Now, just with a little bit of experience, I know I can usually negotiate some things down. So I'm going to include everything up to 265, just in case there's something that's listed like at 251. So it's always good to kind of go a little bit outside those parameters because you might be able to negotiate that down. The type of house right here, we can do single family, garden home, manufactured model, town home. He specifically said he wanted stick built, so I'm going to leave the rest of that alone. Um, I don't know what the Mapsco grid is. I've never used that. So I don't think you'll need to. The subdivision, if they are really held in on just a particular subdivision, you can put it in here. They have common names, they have legal names. You can look those up by clicking this. And as you can see, every one of them, like if they really want to be in Naked Indian subdivision, then you can limit it to that. Some people are very particular about subdivisions. Uh, year built, pretty self-explanatory. Number of bedrooms. He said he wanted at least a three bedroom. Uh, if you want to limit or if you want to put a maximum, you can. And he said he wanted at least a two bath. So that was the big thing that he said that he wanted. Also in here, you can pick if they need garages, whatever it is. Yeah, if you want a specific address, zip codes. If you know the MLS number, you can search for the MLS number. Uh, months back, this is more for comps. This is going to say how many months it's been there. I'm going to leave that alone for now. And if there's something else that they really want, let's say they just really want a one-story house or a two-story house, all you have to do to add more fields is click the Add or Remove field right here. So all of the available fields are over here on the left, and on the right is what I'm getting to pick from. So as you can see, everything that's on the right, status, area, map search, type, map right, all of that's already here. So if there's something that they really want, they really want two fireplaces, or two stories or whatever it is, you just click the right arrow button and it moves it from the available fields into currently selected. And as soon as I click OK, you'll see the screen refresh real quick and boom, there's number of stories. Uh, he didn't really say. So pay attention to that. Um, what I use that a lot is for proposed terms. Like I have another client right now that has got a USDA um, pre-approval. So if I go down to proposed terms, It'll allow me to say, hey, look, they're FHA approved. I only want houses that are FHA approved. And as you can see, there are a ton of options with this. So uh, make sure you really talk to your clients so that way you're not running around showing them houses all day long that misses what they really and truly want. You want to make sure that you're hitting the nail on the head to save your time and frustration because if you're not showing the client what they want, then they're not going to trust you as a realtor and you might lose that client. So he's an investor. It's pretty wide open. When I'm done with this, I can do a couple of different things. I can click map results. As soon as it does that, it's going to pull up a map for me and it's going to show me where all of these listings are. But you have to be careful because it's only showing me the first 40 out of 322 listings. Um, so you kind of get an idea of where these are. If you want to look at 41 through 80, just click next and here's 41 through 80. Uh, let's say he really wants one in Shavano Park. You can either click right here and it'll open up that particular property and you can take a look at it. Um, if you go back to refine criteria, you can also click view results. So what that does is just give them to you straight up line items straight down the list and you can look at them this way. So you kind of get an idea of where they're all at. Or what I'm going to do is because this is for a particular client, I'm going to say save search. So what is my search name, guys? You can name it whatever you want, whatever will help you remember. My client's name is Matthew Dalton. So I'm going to type in Matthew Dalton Investor32, um, and he wants to be under 250K. Okay? That's how I'm going to remember. And you can attach it to a client. So you can see a list of a lot of my clients, or you can add a new client here. So again, I'm adding a new client. And this is, you know, Sabor's got a lot of uh, CRM capabilities that you can use if you're not using Chime already or something else. 
You can use this as your CRM. It's a great place to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and input his email address here. And he is a buyer. Okay. The next section, you can fill all this out. And what do you want to send him? Do you want to send him the public custom form? You know, I'm going to send him a short one, no photos, whatever it is. I'm just going to leave that one as is. How often do you want to run this search? Investors like to know what's going on daily. As a matter of fact, most people like to know what's going on daily. So what that means is, yes, I'm going to be emailing him the first 300 properties. But tomorrow, when it runs at 11 p.m., it's not going to send him 322 properties again. It's only going to send him the brand new ones that meet that criteria. So the first day, he's going to get a ton. The second day, he's going to get one or two or three or whatever somebody uploads to the MLS. You can run it immediately. You can tell them you can run this search for up to 120 days. Um, and it's this right here. It says, send me a message four days before the search expires. So on October 15th, I'm going to get an email saying, hey, Matthew Dalton's search is about to run out. Have you sold him a house? It's kind of nice. You can also notify yourself every time he gets an email, you get an email. Um, that kind of inundates me, so I don't really like doing that. Uh, if you're starting out and you really want to know what your clients are doing, then yeah, you can see what they get every time. And send notifications to the client when the search runs. He needs to know that. And send email notifications even when there are no new changed listings. So I like to click that one to let them know they're still getting the hottest, newest stuff on the market. So then you're gonna click save this search. So now that search is saved. He's got the email, it ran it immediately as you saw earlier, and it's gonna run it every single day. So I'm gonna do one more of these. I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker this time. So I'm gonna go back to the classic because I'm on my desktop, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with multifamily. I'm going to get rid of the two that have contracts on them already. I'm going to select my boundaries one more time just so I can show you how quickly you can set clients up with this. So I remember he wanted kind of down 151 just inside the loop. And it's very important that once you get this set up, you talk to your client and make sure that they're getting what they want. 265 thousand dollar max I'm gonna leave the rest of this alone because oh, I think he said a maximum of four bucks so I'm gonna leave the rest of that alone I'm gonna save this search one more time this time I'm gonna say multi-family for Matthew Dalton and now that I've already saved him he should be in here Ta -da. daily run the search at 7 p.m. run it immediately all the notifications even when there's nothing new and we're done. So guys, if you know what your clients want, you can do this very, very, very quickly. So don't put it off because <laughs> as you can see, I did that in about five minutes and it's done. And you can see over here, there's over a hundred results for the first one and there's four results for this one. If I log into the MLS and I just wanna see what got sent to Matthew, we can. I've got another client named Zach who's looking for a home. He got two new searches sent out today at 7 a.m. So we can go in there and find out what he's looking at. So if he ever calls me and says, hey, Colin, I got your email. This is what's going on. I can get in there real quick, click on it. As you can see, it's a one story. Total units, 2232. This one right here, $260,000. Just had a price change. Super interesting. Maybe he's into that one. We'll see. So hopefully he'll call me here pretty soon. So guys, that's a very quick overview on how to do a search. If you have any specific questions, guys, just shoot me an email, Colin at White Line Realty, and I can dive into this a little bit deeper, but just don't be afraid to go in here and click on some things, guys. You'll learn a lot just by clicking around, but right there is a quick way to set up your search to find what your clients are looking for.